Hi and welcome to another episode of Reaper TV. In this video I want to check out and see how easy it is to get a good end result just using Easy Mix from ToonTrack and a couple of their expansion packs. Now it says it's easy on the box, how easy is it to get some good results? Let's check it out in this video right now. Okay, so what I have in front of me at the moment is just a normal session setup, and we've got a couple of guitars, we've got a bass, all DI'd, and we have a drum track setup, and it's a MIDI drum track done with Easy Drummer. There's nothing else on this, so we've just got the dry guitars and bass. So we're going to start off just by using Easy Mix to create some guitar tones and some bass tones, then we're going to apply some standard stock EQ just to EQ out some of the fuzz in the low end to make things sit a little bit better, and other than that, we're just going to use Easy Mix. So let's start off with the guitars. So if we come down to the guitar tracks, you can see that I've got right guitar, right guitar, left guitar, left guitar. I've got a couple of different tracks on there. So we're going to start off with the first right guitar, and I'm just going to click to insert a new effects. Uh, we're going to apply an instance of Easy Mix, and from this you can see we've got Everything's set up in instruments, effects, types, genre, and any preset packs. Now, I've got a couple of preset packs installed in this, but we are realistically only going to use a couple of different effects. So even though you may not have the same one as me, you should still be able to find an option that's very similar to it. So first of all, I'm going to go into my favorites because there are certain guitar tones that I use on a regular basis. And these are standard guitar tones, and you can see that we've got Aggression, and I've got Middle Earth XXL. We have a couple of bass tones, and we've got a couple of EQ things in there. So the first thing I'm going to do is just going to play the guitar track without any effects on there, and then we'll listen to it with the instance of Aggression, just so you can listen to what the guitar tone sounds like. So let's just come into this, and you can see we've got the guitar track. So if we listen to it with nothing on there, you'll hear we just have a clean dry DI. So you go, there's our dry clean DI. So once we come down and just select aggression, you can hear now we've got an instance of that guitar tone. So right out of the box, it's a pretty good sound. And if we come down, we can tweak that a bit further. You can see we've got the option to control the amount of gain and the amount of EQ that's being applied to it, the input and the output levels. And other than that, there's nothing really we can do. So while Easy Mix doesn't necessarily give you a whole amount of options to fine tune and tweak, it does give you a great starting point. So there's our first guitar tone. And uh, we're gonna do the same thing now for guitar left. So we're gonna come down, we'll solo that one. I'll just use another instance of Easy Mix. Now the easiest way of doing this is to literally just drag that over onto the next track. That will automatically load up an instance of Easy Mix and it'll also load in the previous sound sample we're using in there. So for this example, I don't want the aggression track. I want the middle of the XXL. So I'll select that, change it over to that. And now let's listen to those two guitar tracks played together. So you can see with the left guitar, again, we've got the gain and we've got the EQ. And on this one, I've dialed the gain back a fair bit just to allow a bit more of the guitar pick to come through. But you can see, pretty straightforward setup. Now, all I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate the aggression onto the second guitar and the same with the Middle Earth XXL. And the reason I'm doing this is if we take a look at the actual structure of the tracks, you can see that I've got various different parts. I've got the verse, I've got the chorus, the verse again. So I've sampled those out as individual pieces. So we need to make sure that we've got those guitar tones on there. So let's have a listen now with everything bar the bass being affected. So we've got this. It sounds okay, we need to apply that EQ to it before we go too much further. But let's come down to the bass section, let's just solo that out. And if we listen to the bass, now I've got two tracks there, a duplicate of the same track. I don't tend to sort of uh, do two passes when it comes to the bass, I just duplicate it because we've got one track that's right up front and you can see that's set to zero volume level. And then we've got one that's dialed right back and in this instance, minus 20 dB or so reason I do that is because I put a cleaner sound on the main bass track and we drop a really distorted sound on the second one just to fill out the low end of the bass track. So let's just put the sound that I want from Easy Mix on the first track. So let's just solo that off. And if we listen to that, you can hear we've got started with. 
just an ordinary DI. So we're going to come up to add another instance of Easy Mix to that now. So let's just click, drag up Easy Mix onto the track, and we'll just bring that in from the other screen. And you can see this is what we've got. So we come to the favorites again. You can see I've got Ryan Big Nasty Bass and I've got Frederick Clean Bass. Now I'm going to use the Frederick Clean Bass on this one. And if we again listen to that now with it applied. So a much better tone, much fuller, much richer sound on there. Now we're going to do the same again. We're just going to bring up another instance of Easy Mix onto the second bass track. And we'll do exactly the same again. So I'll bring this in. And on this track, we're going to use another one of my favorites, which is the Ryan Big Nasty Bass. So we'll select that. We've got the drive and the EQ, and again, the input and output. Now, we're going to look at the input and output in a moment just to make sure that we're not pushing too hard and we can get everything back to where we want it to be, which is about minus 18 dB. Now, if you haven't looked at the video on gain staging, I'd recommend you do if you want to know what I'm doing with this, and I'll link that in the description below, also up in the top right-hand corner now, so you can take a look at that once we finish this video. So let's just play the two tracks back now. So we've got the nasty distorted bass and the clean bass together. So this is what we've got. So there we go. It's pretty subtle with the distorted sound, but once you start to adjust the mix and everything to get it exactly where you want, that really just fills out the, the bass tone and it works really nicely in there. So we've now got the basics of our track. So let's just unsolo these a second. Uh, let's just listen to that now where we've applied the guitar tones and the bass tones to see where we are as a reference point. Okay, it's already sounding okay. We need to EQ it and we need to do a few other things. So that's the next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at EQ in each of the guitars just to get those where we want and get rid of any unwanted frequencies that we end up picking up as the Easy Mix guitar packs and the tones that we use in there, the impulse responses and so on, the way they're affecting the sound of the guitar. So let's take a look at that now. So let's go to our first guitar track. Let's just solo that off a second and we just make sure we're in the right position. And what I'm gonna do is just apply some EQ to that. So let's just come up and we're gonna use the stock EQ that ships with, in this example, we're using Reaper, but obviously every single door is gonna come up with its own EQ. And if not, there are already some great free ones again, which I've covered in various different videos. So I recommend checking those out. So we're gonna just gonna use Re-EQ. Drag and drop that out onto the track. So we've got the first guitar track on there. We've got the EQ on there. So now let's just listen to that and let's take a look at what we want to do sound-wise. Now the first thing I tend to do, and you don't have to do this, but it's good to get rid of that low end. I'll tend to put a high pass filter on that, set that to be around about 50 hertz with a nice sort of sloping shelf on it. That way we get rid of any unwanted low end frequency that starts to compete in the bass and the kick drum area. So that's a good starting point and something I tend to do. I also know that up around the 2K, 2.5K mark is where you start to get that horrible fizziness from your guitar tone. So what we want to do is go in and we want to deal with that first of all to get rid of that unwanted frequency. So let's just bring that over to around 2.5K. I'm just going to take that and we're going to boost that up just to give it a boost, and we're just gonna keep this quite a narrow boost. Now, the reason I'm boosting that is because I want to make those frequencies I wanna deal with plainly evident and find the ones that just sound the worst. So let's play this guitar track part back, and let's have a listen to what we're doing with that. And we'll scan across the frequency range and find the frequency that stands out the most. So what you should have been able to hear there was those horrible fizzy tones. So let's listen to it with and without. So let's play that back now.
you can tell there is already a vast improvement. Now, obviously, you could spend a lot more time EQing this, and for this video, I'm not going to. They're the frequencies that sound the worst. So I'm going to leave that as it is, and I'm going to do exactly the same then on the second guitar track, which is going to be slightly different because it's got a different guitar tone applied to it. So let's just drag up that EQ onto the second guitar. Let's just do exactly the same thing on there. Now, I'm just going to pause the video just so I can run through this, but I'm going to go through exactly the same process again. And there we go, there's the EQ that we've ended up with. And you can see it is pretty similar to the first EQ section that we had. So I've now gone through and done the basics of get rid of those horrible frequencies, cut out the low end. Now, the easy thing with Reaper is we want to apply exactly the same EQ to the second, which is the chorus of each of the guitar tracks. So I just simply drag that over, that'll duplicate it, including all the settings that I've applied to it. So there's our EQ. So let's take a listen to start off with what that sounds like now. Okay, so we've got rid of that fizzy, horrible, disgusting sound. Next, let's go down and quickly EQ the bass. Now, I'm going to apply this to the bass track, the original bass track. I could apply it if I wanted to to the master track, but I like to have a different EQ curve on the clean bass to what I do on the distorted bass. I tend not to worry too much with the distorted one because it's low in the mix. So let's just do exactly the same again. Let's go to our effects browser. Let's drag up an instance of ReQ. Drop that onto the distorted bass one, no, the distorted, sorry, the clean bass. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a preset because I like the way this sounds. It really fills things out. So I just cl click and I come down to the bass low pass. And you can see that just boosts the low frequencies, gives it a cut off, a roll off around about the sort of 15 to 20 hertz, and then rolls off any high frequency completely. So let's listen to the bass track now with that. Let's just mute the guitars. And let's play that. And let's just do it before one after. So what you should be able to hear is it gets rid of that clicky tone that we've got on the sort of higher frequencies. It cuts all that out. Now, I like that in this, this particular mix, obviously down to taste. So all we've done so far is apply Easy Mix and some re -cue. So let's move on now and take a look at what we can do to enhance everything inside the track. The next thing I'm going to do is I want to quickly balance the levels off because where we've applied these easy mix instances, they've boosted the frequencies. So if we take a look and I just run the track a second, you'll see that if we take a look at the guitar tracks, they start to peak and go into the yellow area. Now, I don't want that right at this point. I want to give myself some headroom. So let's look at that. Let's just hit play. So what I want to do now is I want to go in and adjust the levels, the output level on the instances of Easy Mix. So if I just open that up, it's very quick and easy. All we're going to do is keep an eye on that meter. Let's just expand that out slightly so we can see a bit better what we're doing. You can use either of these. And then we're going to play that. I'm just going to adjust the output just to pull that back ever so slightly. And it's not going to be much. It's just going to be enough to make sure that our levels sit nicely. So let's just play that. There we go, that's the first guitar done. Now, what I'm looking to do is just make sure that I only peak ever so slightly when a sort of there's a hard pick attack or louder part over into the yellow area. That's going to give us the headroom that we need. So I do exactly the same again. We'll just open up the second instance of Easy Mix. And I'll just pause the video now and I'll go through and make sure all these levels on both guitars and bass are all where I want them to sit. So I've got all my levels now sitting where I want them to be, around about the minus 18 dB. So the next thing I want to do is, with everything roughly in place, I want to give the track just a little bit more life, a bit more polish. And to do that, we're going to come over to the master track. We're going to click and we're going to add another instance of Easy Mix. So we're going to come up and drop Easy Mix on there. And what we've got with Easy Mix is we can apply different kinds of processing to different kinds of tracks. We've got things for guitars and we've got things for keyboards and 
uh, you know, vocals and things along those lines. But we've also got things that allow us to apply it to the master bus. So if we click, we can see with all the packs I've got installed, I have a whole range of different things like master reverb and master limiter and master cruncher and all these kinds of things. And if I want to break it down by genre or mix pack or you know the preset packs that I've got, I can easily do that. So if I wanted, I can go to mastering two, for example. And you can see I can now build up different effects based upon uh, presets that have been built for us inside Easy Mix. Now, one of the ones I tend to like the most, again, if I come to the favorites, is I've got the Metal Masher 2. Now, I'm working with rock music, you know, guitars, distorted guitars, bass, and so on. So this works really well with that. It boosts the level up. If I click on it, you see what it does is it's going to apply a compressor and an EQ. And that's realistically all it's going to do. So it's going to compress the track. It's going to EQ the track. And it's also going to allow us to boost those levels up. So you see that we've got an EQ section, we've got a mash section, and again, we've got the input and output. So let's turn that off a second. Let's listen to the track without it. And then let's just kick it in and you see the difference in level and the overall tightness of the track itself. It kind of just pulls everything together a little bit better. So before... Sounds okay, sounds a little bit dull, a bit lifeless. Let's kick that in. Let's try it now. So the levels are going to go up, but also the glue that holds the mix together is just going to sound a bit better. So let's listen to that now. So you can see what I mean there. We really do get a much more polished sounding overall mix. The drums start to come through better. The guitars start to sound livelier and the bass kind of fills that low end out nicely. Now, you could leave it there if you wanted to and there's nothing wrong with that. It sounds pretty good. It's a good starting point and by all means, you know, leave it there if you want to. But there's still more things we can do. So if we come back over to the mixer, the drums sound pretty good and you can see I've adjusted the levels and things on your previously this is your sort of mixing process where you get the different parts of it exactly where you want. And obviously you can get into automation and really get into fine tuning it. But this is a starting point. So if you're putting your demo together before you do it to see what the song sits like, this is a good starting point. But let's let's take a look at what I tend to do now drum wise. So the drums sound pretty good out of the box. Uh, I'm just using an instance of Easy Drum. And if I open that up, you'll see the kit that I'm using, which is the kit that I normally tend to use, which is the metal machine and I use the big room preset because I think that just sounds absolutely brilliant for the kind of music that I like uh, composing. So we've got that there and if we take a look at the mixer section you can see that there's various different levels there. I've routed everything out the way that I want it to be routed out. So I've used it, I'm using this with my slight tweaks to levels and so on. But let's just come back into uh, Reaper and what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to the kick drum and I'm going to click to add another instance of Easy Mix. And what I want to do with that is we're going to take a look at some of the drum sampling we've got in there, drum, drum processing. So let's just do the same as we've done before, which is just solo out the kick drum in this example. So let's just solo that off. And let's have a listen to that with nothing else applied to this. This is just the easy drummer mix. So nothing being applied to it. Sounds okay. And like I say, we've got the... Uh, the metal masher on this, that's giving it some, some clarity, so that's giving it a little bit extra, but we can still make it even better again. So let's just come in and take a look at what options we've got available. So if we come down to drums, for example, you can see we've got a whole range of different things we can do on there. We've got tons and tons and tons of things. And some of them are for drum buses, some of them for uh, individual drum components, some for different kinds of you know genres of music and so on. So you've got a massive array, even the sort of basic options you've got Easy Mix 2 still give you a good you know sort of starting block. But let's audition some of the things we have available. So let's just come up to the filter area at the top and let's just put kick in there. So we can now go in and we say we want drums and we want kick. So now you can see we filtered that down to only kick orientated effects or you know presets. So you can see we've got enhanced metal kick, firm kick, gate one, and so on. And you can see the preset it comes from, what type of thing it is, it's an insert, the number of effects that apply to it. And again, if we click on it, 
Look on the right hand side, you can see that by using the firm kick, it's going to add some EQ, a compressor and a transient shaper. We can adjust the EQ shape and the amount of sustain that's being applied. So let's listen to that, let's audition it, and we'll see what that's like. And we'll go through a couple of different presets and see one that I think sits well with what we're trying to achieve. So let's just hit that. Okay, I'm kind of liking the enhanced metal kick, and that's one that I do tend to use a lot. And you can see, again, we've got a compressor, an EQ, and we've also got an overload. So we can enhance that if we want to even more so. We can apply more EQ or less EQ to it and compression. We can enhance it. So let's try the enhance and see what that actually does to the sound, see if we can improve upon what we have there. So let's again hit play. So you can see as we sort of drag the enhance over and increase that, we start to get a little bit more click to the track or to the to the drum, the kick drum, which if you're into metal and you like the sort of that thrash kind of sound, then adding a little bit more click into it is kind of the kind of sound that you're going to be looking for. But we'll leave it as it is there. And what we'll do is we'll A-B that. So let's put the, the drum track back on. So let's just go up. Let's just solo the entire drum track now. And what I'll do is I'll turn that on and off and we'll see how that affects the kick as an overall. So let's just let's just hit play. Hopefully you can hear that. It's subtle, but it allows the kick drum just to shine through just ever ever so slightly, you know, a bit more clarity to it, a bit more attack to it, and it just shines through just a little bit better. Now we're going to do the same thing again now for the snare drum. So we're going to click, add an instance of Easy Mix, and we'll go through and we'll filter through to that. So we'll just say we want drums, we want to use snare, and let's take a look at what options we have available to us in that. And let's just go through and just say we want to use metal, for example. And you can see we've got, again, a whole range of different options available to us, different EQs, different, we've got a snare bottom and snare top. So in this particular kit, we've got a snare drum top and a snare drum uh, bottom. So we can apply two different patches if we wanted to. So again, let's just solo off just the snare top and let's try some of these out and see what they sound like. There we go. Adding a bit more compression and a bit more EQ to it brings the level up, crushes the, the sort of tone on there. And again, we can use the transient shape and the enhancer just to give it a bit more attack, a bit more snap. Now, what I would always suggest you do when you're using this, even with Easy Mix or anything else, is listen to it in isolation. Do you like it? If you do, then put it in with the entire track and see if you still like it. You may find that the effect is good, but it needs to have a little bit more or a little bit less. Use it as a starting point in isolation, then put it into the overall mix. So let's just go with that. Let's just pull that back and let's just solo the drum track. We've enhanced the kick, we've enhanced the snare, the two main elements. So we can hear the snare now starts to punch through much the same as the kick drum does. Now you could, if you wanted to, go and add a lot more to this, but let's take a listen to what we've got with the overall mix, just using those, those simple, quick EQ and easy mix settings. Okay, so this is where we are now.
not too bad, not too shabby. Like I say, we've gone through and done some real basic things. So let's take a listen to what it sounded like originally. I'll turn all those effects off. We've got the DI. Then I'll put it back on without the enhancement to the overall master track. And then we'll switch that on so we can see what it's like through those various different stages. So let's take a listen to it now with nothing on there at all. They're just the DI signals we started with. So now let's listen to it with everything on except for what we have applied to the master track. So let's listen to that now. And finally, let's just switch on what we have the metal masher on the master track and see how that just brings everything tighter together and gives us a much better sounding end result. So let's listen to that. And there you have it. That's how easy it is to get a pretty decent sounding mix just using Easy Mix and the stock EQ inside Reaper. Well, I hope you found this video useful. If you've got any comments, questions, or feedback, pop those in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all the new content we add every single week. Until next time, happy mixing.